Hello, I am Manuela Drogué from Buenos Aires, Argentina. This is my 35th year practicing Taekwondo and also course training in other martial arts. During that time, I have been studying theory and history and writing articles on the subject. Today, I want to do two different things in this video. First, I want to show the martial arts community the genealogical point where Taekwondo, Tan Soo Do, Karate and Kung Fu meet. That meeting point is called Pasai Kata or Pal Sek Hyon. And second, I want to provide a reference on how two different Korean styles, Mudo Kwan on one side and ITF Taekwondo on the other side, would perform Pal Sek and how their different criterion would translate to motion, each with its own particular flavor. Later in this video, I will include more precise historical information on Pasai, or Palsek, and the second set of performances. I hope this sheds some light on the origins of Taekwondo, that it crushes some prejudice and misconceptions that exist among martial arts groups, and that it helps to show outside their respective circles, how these two different traditional Korean martial arts styles conceive their technique. Thanks for watching and I hope you find it interesting. I hope you liked it. Pasai, or Palse, as Koreans call it, is a form attributed to Sokon Matsumura, nicknamed Bushi, or warrior. Probably the most celebrated karateka in history, who lived a very long life during the 19th century. Matsumura had learned Tode, a hybrid of folk arts and white crane kung fu, from his teacher, Kanga Sakugawa. After achieving proficiency, he traveled to Wuzhou in southern China to further his martial arts education. In Okinawa, he had also learned from Chinese expert Ko Sokun. Matsumura was both a training fanatic and a practical fighter, 
since he was the chief of the Okinawan king's security. He ended up designing his own method of karate that became known as Shurite and later named Chorin Ryu by his students. Some authors say Matsumura designed Pasai based on his knowledge of leopard style kung fu, while others insist that its roots are in five elements fist kung fu. In any case, Patsai became a symbol of Shurite, and with time, Matsumura students developed more than a do dozen variations of it. Patsai was taken from Okinawa to Japan by Jijin Funakoshi in the 1920s. With his son Yoshitaka, Funakoshi altered Pasai to fit the blunt, nationalistic, samurai-inspired imperialism of the day. That was Shotokan Karate, which during the 1930s was learned by Koreans who were attending Tokyo universities and later took the style to their homeland. This Korean Karate black belts would become the pioneers of Taekwondo and Tang Soo Do. Actually, Tang Soo Do is a Korean pronunciation of Karate Do. Koreans also changed the style to customize it to their combat and training ideas and modified Pasai, uh, making it to become one of the main routines of Tang Soo Do and Taekwondo until the late 1960s when it was replaced by the new forms made in Korea. The main differences between Korea, the Korean version and the prior Japanese version is that Koreans transformed a low side kick into a head level kick. They added a dramatic jump, turned several blocks into strikes, and thus made it even more athletic, aggressive, and bold than the Shotokan version. As author Alex Gillis has put it, during the 1970s, Taekwondo was karate on steroids. Here I have a couple of books showing Pasai. First, by uh, karate experts, of course, uh, on top of them is uh, Master Funakoshi's 1925 book. Then I have Choji Nagamine's Essence of Okinawan Karate classic, and then Patrick McCarthy's classical of Okinawan Karate, um, but besides, this is, these are just a few of the uh, books that contain Pasai, but most interesting is interestingly for what I am intending to show, here we have the uh, Korean authors, first, Hwang Ki's 1958 book, then General Choi Hwang Ki's 1965 book, Dokson Song's 1968 Korean Karate book, and again, Hwang Ki's further uh, versions of Tang Soo Do, and this is with his son, uh, Grandmaster Hwang Hyun Chul, and also I have my friend Roberto Villalba's uh, book, all of them show Pasai or Palsek. Uh, Palsek Hyong. Hyong means form, and it is the Korean equivalent to the Japanese word kata. The word Hyong was later dropped by the International Taekwondo Federation, which calls its patterns tul. And the World Taekwondo Federation changed to call the, their forms pumse. In Korea, Pasai was used uh, to practice for testing for black belt level. And well, it's obvious that it carries a legacy of many generations of martial artists, which makes it very interesting. Here I show two ways of performing it. One is the Mudokwan style, of which there are Tang Soo Do and Taekwondo branches. And uh, the way I show it is very close to the old Korean style karate, but with the characteristic extended kicks, kicking style of Mudo Kwan. Its energy can be described as fire-like, very strong, fast, aggressive, compressed. 
and with some Chinese influence, particularly since Mudu Kwan founder Huang Qi used to train Kung Fu. And then I am showing the International Taekwondo Federation version, noting that the ITF does not include PALSEC within its program, as all Korean organizations try to get rid of all traces of karate in Taekwondo. So I have made an imagination exercise on how General Choi would have adopted Pasai to his martial arts ideas in case he decided to keep it. This method is slightly more paused, relaxed, very powerful, with an energy comparable to the waves that roll and seem to retreat and come back in with full force, smashing. General Choi believed that balance, relaxation, breathing out, proper body weight application, and final acceleration of motions were the main considerations when performing a form. To facilitate the teaching of synchronization, he even altered certain Tang Su Do hand motions and maneuvers. His lower tempo worked very, worked very well for allowing him to introduce complex kicking motions to his ITF patterns. For the ITF, when it comes to combat, power is more impo important than complex applications. And in this uh, sense, General Choi was closer to Shotokan Karate than to Okinawan Karate. Both methods of execution have their merits and serve to develop different attributes. Although I have trained in both ways, I specialize in and teach ITF style under Grandmaster Park jong Su. Occasionally, I will ask my advanced students to get into the Mudu Kwan higher speed burning style mode uh, to make it closer to the rhythm demand that is demanded by combat. Well, I hope you like this video and that it makes you hungry for more knowledge in the fascinating world of martial arts. Thanks for watching.